Good morning. At the onset, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, BW Business World, BW Healthcare, Dr. Batra and Mr. Harinder for inviting me and asking me to talk on something which I think is very, very important. And that is pulmonary disease and cancer and the link. Now, if we look at data on the burden of disease as far as India is concerned, there has been a paradigm shift as far as the burden of disease in our own country is concerned. In 2017, a very interesting paper was published in The Lancet, which looked at the burden of disease in India from 1990 to 2016. And interestingly, it was called countries within a country, because it looked at the way India has evolved, and each state seemed to evolve on its own like an independent country. But what it showed was that in 1990, Already one state had started moving from communicable diseases, maternal and child health related diseases, infections, to non-communicable diseases, and that was the state of Kerala. But gradually, from 1919 to 2016, a paradigm shift happened in the burden of disease, and somewhere around 2004, the burden of disease shifted across the country to non-communicable diseases. Some states were slow, especially states in central India, where the burden of disease continued for a long time to be infant mortality, maternal deaths, communicable diseases. But gradually, that shift has happened. We've had outbreaks in between in the last 22 years. This century has been a century of outbreaks from SARS, MERS, H1N1, swine flu pandemic to corona pandemic. But by and large, if you look at the burden of disease, that has shifted to non-communicable disease. And if you look at morbidity and mortality, then lung cancer, uh, cancers itself, respiratory diseases, diabetes, coronary artery disease, all are there as far as the burden of disease is concerned. So then the next question that comes up is, is the link between respiratory diseases and the rise in cancer, which has happened as far as this paradigm shift has happened, just coincidental? Or is there a link that these two are linked and they have actually sort of driven each other in terms of increasing the burden of disease. So has the increase in respiratory diseases to do something with cancers? And have cancers also led to an increase in the respiratory diseases? And I think there is a large body of data which suggests that there is not just a coincidental happening, but a link between increase in respiratory diseases and cancers which we are seeing. Now let's look at it from the point of view of certain environmental and genetic factors. We know that there are certain environmental and genetic factors which predispose to chronic respiratory diseases. But these factors are also common for various cancers. The classical example, of course, is tobacco use or smoking. If you look at smoking, smoking is a risk factor for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. It's also a risk factor for lung cancer. Then there are certain other environmental factors, indoor air pollution. A large part of urban India, there is still a significant degree of indoor air pollution. We have a lot of good uh, uh, measures by the government of India, the Ujwala mission, which is moving from using biomass, which is basically wood and cow dung for cooking, towards using LPG. But it's, it's happening in a big way, but still in many villages, people still prefer to use wood and cow dung or chula for cooking because they're used to the food that they get and the smoke that comes out which makes the, adds a different flavor to the food. But when young women cook in this in indoor environment where ventilation is very poor, it leads to chronic respiratory diseases. But there is data also, especially from PGI Chandigarh, which su suggests that this also leads to a higher odds ratio of getting cancers. So again, environmental factors like smoking, indoor air pollution, and now of course there is data which is also coming up that even outdoor air pollution, chronic exposure to outdoor air pollution is also a risk factor for chronic respiratory diseases and also a risk factor for lung cancer. So there is a shared environmental and genetic link between various respiratory diseases and cancer. And all of these are something that, in my mind, are preventable. Smoking is something that is preventable. We need to be more aggressive. Pollution is something we need to prevent, whether it's indoor or outdoor air pollution. And therefore, there does exist a link between pulmonary diseases and cancers. Then there are certain occupations which happen, which cause 
respiratory diseases, but also lead to higher chance of cancers. Classical example being exposure to asbestos. Asbestos is a substance which is used as far as insulation or uh, keeping the uh, houses warm is concerned. In still many places, asbestos cont continues to be used. And asbestos can lead to chronic lung diseases it, because the fibers get deposited in the lung. But it's also a risk factor for various tumors, including pleural tumors known as mesotheliomas. And therefore, again, occupational exposure to various factors uh, can lead to respiratory problem and also can lead to cancers. It can also happen as far as uh, various uh, uh, other uh, exposure like radiation is concerned. If you look at the pathophysiology of cancers and if you look at the pathophysiology of chronic respiratory diseases, in the early stage, both are driven a lot by inflammation. And there again, there is a link between chronic respiratory diseases and the cancers. Um, there are certain pulmonary disorders which can also sort of give a link that there may be an underlying cancer disorder. And uh, I saw a person a few days ago, he, uh, on, while he was st standing for the salute on 26th January, suddenly collapsed and fell. And he had a clot which had gone into his lungs causing pulmonary embolism. But hypercoagulable state is also a factor which can happen in patients who have underlying cancer. And although he was treated for pulmonary thromboembolism, when he was subsequently investigated, he had a lesion which was actually associated with cancer. So again, res respiratory manifestations of a clot in the lung can be a paraneoplastic manifestation of an underlying malignant process. So I think it's very important to remember. But conversely, there are certain diseases which are said that may have a protective effect against cancers. Again, it's, it's more of an association. I think we need more data. But there are some disorders like allergic disorders which are said to have lesser chance of people developing cancers if they have chronic allergies, allergic rhinitis or asthma. But I think we need more data from that point of view. Then there are certain infections which we have which are also linked to cancers. One of the infections that we see very commonly in our country is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis and certain other immune disorders heal by leading a scar in the lungs. And sometimes that scar can later on in later life become a cause of cancer, something which is known as scar carcinoma. So scars themselves can also sometimes become a source of cancer. It can happen in other disorders, a disease which we see, autoimmune disease known as scleroderma, but also as far as post-tubercular fibrosis is concerned. Also, when we have patients who are having cancers and we give them chemotherapy, if there is latent tuberculosis, then that can get activated and we can have frank evidence of active pulmonary tuberculosis in a person who had cancer but was given chemotherapy, his immunity became low, and a dormant focus of tuberculosis in the lung got activated, leading to pulmonary tuberculosis. So what I've been trying to say is that there is a huge link in very many ways between uh, respiratory diseases and cancers that we see, especially as far as lung cancer is concerned. I've already given an example of COPD. So COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, does happen both in smokers, and smokers also have a higher chance of lung cancer. But COPD, because of the chronic inflammation it causes, irrespective of the smoking exposure or the biomass exposure, also has, causes a higher risk of people developing cancers. So I think it's very important to remember that COPD itself is a risk factor for lung cancer. And there are certain other diseases in the lung which we call interstitial lung disease or interstitial fibrosis. They also are a risk factor for cancers because they can also in later life lead to nodule formation and have a cancer occurrence. Uh, I remember a long time back, one of a very one, a person whom, when I joined Ames, was the pro was a professor in medicine, uh, and then retired. Subsequently, had interstitial lung disease, and while we were treating him for ILD, he had idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. On follow-up CT, developed a small nodule, and that actually was an associated lung cancer which he had, uh, as with associated ILD. So that can also happen, of course. There are certain drugs also which can predispose to the development of uh, 
lung cancer in un with patients with underlying interstitial lung disease. So there is def definitely a link between pulmonary disorders and cancers. But then the next question comes, what can we do to really decrease both pulmonary disorders and cancers if you really want to be active? One, of course, is the issue of trying to have a good screening program. In the West, we have what is known as a regular screening program for lung cancer, which is for all people who are heavy smokers, who are underlying COPD, and over the age of 40, 45, which is to do regular uh, CT scan, a low-dose CT scan, so that radiation exposure is less, on a regular basis for early detection of a nodule or a lesion in the lung, which may suggest that this is a cancer. So you stratify your population into a high-risk group, and the high-risk group, like I said, are those who have an underlying lung disease which predisposes to cancer and have an environmental risk factor, which could be smoking, biomass exposure, which also predisposes them to cancer. And then you do a regular screening for them by an annual or maybe once in two years, depending on the lesion, a low-dose CT of the chest to see whether they have a nodule and whether that is looking suspicious and subsequently follow it up. Data which has come from the U.S. suggest that this does help in picking up early lung cancer, which is resectable and treatable. But we need to see it more in our setup because we have a lot of other lesions because of past infections, tuberculosis, childhood infections, which sometimes can mimic a scar or a lesion which may look like tuberculosis. So there is a project which we had started which is going on at AIMS to look at the utility of low-dose CT scan in high-risk group people who have lung problems who are smokers for early detection of lung cancer. So I think we need to look at various strategies that we can do in people with pulmonary disorders for the early detection for cancers by screening mechanism. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have a biomarker which is useful, but if we did have a biomarker, that would be another very impo uh, good uh, modality to pick up early um, cancer, or if we had a test which could say who is genetically more predisposed to developing cancers. For example, all smokers don't develop cancers. All smokers don't develop COPD. So what is the genetic factors or can we pick up any genetic factors by doing, let's say, a whole genome sequencing to see whether there are certain genetic factors which could uh, predispose one individual as compared, compared to the other to develop an underlying cancer. A lot uh, needs to be done, and I think uh, this is the right forum to discuss such issues because there is a need to look at what we can do in the Indian context, both to decrease chronic respiratory diseases and thereby also decrease cancers which are linked to that. And I think preventive health is something we need to focus on along with early screening. I've just given you one example of early screening. There are innumerable examples which are used for other cancers also also trying to look at genetic markers for which we need to do a research, but it has to be focused on what we see and how things are in our own country. We can't have a program which we can just sort of translocate from the West to India because of our own different challenges. But having said that, two things that I would like to really focus on is that we should focus aggressively on seeing how we can decrease the use of tobacco, whether it's oral or inhaled, we also have this whole issue of vaping, which is known as the use of e-cigarettes coming up a lot in the younger generation. And there, is a, there are studies which, since it's a new thing, we really don't know whether it's linked to cancers, but there are a large number of data which is showing vaping-induced lung injury. But if you start looking at the young generation, e-cigarettes, vaping, hookah bars have become very, very common. And they themselves also lead to respiratory diseases, and somehow, the young generation feels that this is something that is safe. It probably doesn't have nicotine. It has more flavored. And it's difficult for parents to pick it up because e-cigarettes sometimes just look like a pen or they look like a pen drive. And you can carry it in your in the, in the bag, in the school bag, without even the teacher coming to know about it. And although it's banned in our country because there was a huge issue and a few, I mean, two years, two or three years ago, we had this whole white paper and then the government of India banned the sale of e-cigarettes in our country. But if you talk to the young generation, they'll tell you that it's freely available in our country, at, even at the pawn shop and things like that. 
So I think this is another thing that we need to focus on, on preventive health, whether it be the use of tobacco, whether it be vaping, hookah bars, and of course, on the environmental expo exposure that happens both in terms of indoor air pollution and outdoor air pollution, because chronic exposure to both indoor and outdoor air pollution will lead to chronic respiratory diseases and also predispose to cancers. So if we could do that, I think we could decrease the burden of disease, both from the respiratory disease point of view and from the point of view of cancers. Thank you very much.